So we made it up here to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania to the National Museum of Industrial History. This, this place looks area amazing. It's amazing. I can't believe it. This is our very first time to uh, Bethlehem. Yeah. And a matter of fact, it's our first time pulling into this town and uh, just being down here, you know, at the Bethlehem Steel um, campus, basically, I believe yeah. that's what this is considered. It truly is amazing. There is uh, huge buildings everywhere. Uh, our understanding is that this building here is the only one that's left that's actually being used as a museum. All the rest of the properties are, are privately owned. And I believe there was a place over there where the blast furnaces is that we can walk to that's owned by the city. So maybe we'll check that out there as well. There's some uh, cool things out here that we can go and look at that obviously were part of Bethlehem Steel. And uh, right out here is uh, really cool too because we have a couple of uh, really big herringbone gear sitting out front. Um, I saw quite a few of these whenever I worked at Motion, but I never saw one quite this big right here. So these are pretty cool to see in person. Most of the herringbone gears we saw were smaller like this, probably maybe four foot in diameter, but this is something else <laughs> right here. These are totally <laughs> cool. So point is, as soon as you walk up, actually, as soon as you drive up, you instantly start seeing all this great industrial history everywhere, yes. from the buildings to the blast furnaces and all of these big hardware components out here. It's totally cool. By the way, there's a huge car show going on today. So that's why you're hearing all the engines revving, just so you know. <laughs> and uh, the other thing that I was gonna say is that uh, I totally screwed up when we left this morning and we did not get my camera bag that had all the batteries for my GoPro camera in this there. This is the first time that's ever happened to and us. And I always keep a charger in the truck too so we can charge a couple batteries at a time. Even that was taken out when we went to the Hershey uh, RV show and forgot to put it in the truck. So I only have about 50% on one battery of that GoPro. So we're, we got our phones though, so we're gonna go in here and we'll most likely be getting some video using our, our phones for most of the, the footage. And, uh, but I think it's gonna be a great video. There's some really cool machinery inside this museum and we're really excited to get in there and check Just it out. Just the lobby is incredible. As soon as you walk in the doors here, the original bridge crane to the building is right there. So great. So let's go inside and check this out. And Abby and I are super excited about seeing this place. that beautiful bridge crane. Yep. So this is just coming in the door here. Wow. So check this out right here. This is the building that we're in and just point out, look, look at all the machinery, lathes, lathes. That is so cool. There's the bridge cranes right there. And then so here is an actual map of the entire Bethlehem Steel complex. And we're in this building right there. Look how small this building looks compared to the entire campus. That is amazing. So Abby pointed out, here's a number eight machine shop right there. I bet you this would have been incredible to see. Oh my gosh. That is so cool. And we can still see that was the blast furnaces that we saw in the first the first video clip. And these are all machine shops. And uh, this is a you can buy this print. We may end up picking up one of these to, to hang on the wall in the yeah. shop. I think this would be great. Very cool. I just love those those photos there. These are these are part of electric motors right here. You see the rotors. Incredible. Yep. There's another great photo. Look at all of the American flags everywhere. But I also noticed this right here. Turn lathes in a whole giant row of them. Big boys too. So it's just coming into the museum. This place looks awesome. Look, you've got the line powered machine shop over here that we're going to get to check out. Wow. We're going to go through here and see all this stuff. Look at the files. That's oh, the Nicholson file like company. It is the most beautiful thing. <laughs> wow. Look at that display. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. 
Nicholson file. They made the best files. And another great American company that is no longer in America. 1864. Look at this old lathe here. The, uh, so this is for the World's Fair, of foot course. Foot-powered scroll saw. Look at all these old machines mm -hmm. right here. This is incredible. All right, so we've got about 50% left of my battery. So I want to come through here and just show you guys their display for the machine shop and uh, check out the machine. So keep in mind, a lot of these machines are very, very old, going back to the 1800s. So these are more primitive to even a lot of the older machines that we're used to seeing from the 1900s. All right, so this is gonna be a mortising machine right here. That looks totally cool. That's gonna be a, a molding machine, four-sided wood molder. Now here's a shaper, but this is a wood shaper. Tinning, tinning, I'm sorry, tinning machine. It's hard for me to say that one right there. Look at the automatic lathe. Wow. A lot of you guys probably don't know what a turret lathe is. So this was used for mass production. And then directly behind it, you have the what's known as a camelback drill press. Get the stare right oh, there. yeah, I got the stare at mag Front base. And center. So, flat belt lathe here. This one is made by FE Reed and Company, Wooster Mass. All right, we'll keep it moving here. Bevel gear planer. That's a super cool machine. That one was used to make the bevel gears, the gear painted red there. And I know a lot of the guys watching this know what this kind of stuff is, so I'm not trying to explain everything, but there are people that aren't familiar with all these machines, so that's why I'm trying to uh, mention what they are. All right, so, all right, let's move over here because we see some really cool stuff. So we'll start with the metal shaper. This one is a Hindi, very old made up in uh, Torrington, Connecticut. And then right behind the metal shaper, we have the Canton Foundry and Machine Company shop crane. These guys right here have exploded in popularity. They're extremely collectible now, and people are asking pretty high dollar for those guys whenever you find them, but they are very cool. And I've been offered to purchase a few of these from you know folks reaching out to me, and I've just uh, declined because they're just, they're so expensive now, but they're totally cool, especially if you can find one that's like a barn find, you know? So let's keep moving on. Here's the planer. For the guys that aren't familiar, the shaper, the cutter moves. That part right there moves back and forth. And then, so on a planer, the table moves. So your workpiece moves here versus your shaper, the tool moves. And these were built extremely massive, so big, big stuff can be made on the big planers. This is a beautiful drill press right here. This one's made by Bullard and Parsons, so probably what we know as Bullard Company. That is awesome. So also take note of they've got this really cool frame built in here with all of your line shafts, with the flat belts coming down to drive every machine. It looks like they've got this set up to display it there as well. So they probably operate it for display purposes. So what to keep in mind is that uh, before it was real common to have all of your individual machines electric powered with their own electric motor. This is how all the machines would have been run off of line shafts. So somewhere in the shop is going to be a steam engine or some type of engine that's going to be running the line shafts, which are then connected to other pulleys that come down to run each individual machine. Wood shops were the same way. Very cool. It's a beautiful display they've got Incredible. here. Incredible. Just to my right here is a big rate alarm drill press, and this is definitely a very early model. This is... Uh, Hills and Jones Company, 1884. Beautiful.
a lot of these machines are the oldest that I personally have ever seen. And we'll come back to this, uh, Abby's over here looking at the big engines. So look at this planer here. That mm. is beautiful. Look at the detail on the side. Yep. I mean, ugh. That's what makes these older machines so beautiful Agreed. is the architecture, the yes. design that they put into the castings to make everything look pretty and elegant not just boxy and square like today's no, machines. It's so beautiful. So this is a Van Horn, okay? I'm assuming that's gonna be the same as the, possibly the same Van Horn milling machines that we've seen before. An open side planer, I didn't even catch that. That is so cool. This is a, this is a machine bed for a machine just like a planer, but this gives you an example right here of what you would cut with a planer. So if you've got a large casting that you need a machine flats, you would put a part like this on the planer and cut it. And you can see those linear lines going through there. That's from the tool on the planer cutting that flat. Super cool. And then this here is going to be a representation of what the engine was being used as an example to run the line shafts right here. place is just amazing, isn't yeah. it? We were just in the door. Yep, just came in. We're not even partially way back through this, and this is uh, incredible. So we're going to continue to enjoy the museum tour here, and uh, we'll, we'll show you guys a bunch of what they got in here to, to enjoy. But this is, this is great. <laughs> All right, so we'll, uh, we'll carry on from right here. We've got the printing press. I like how they've actually got it hooked up to a steam engine here, so you can you can see how these things would have been operated. They've got this one where they can actually use it to do some printing here. Very cool. This ended up being a really pleasant surprise because this is a snow pumping engine, which they have on, they have one of these on display at the uh, Florida Flywheelers. And we've shown that in a previous video. So this is only the second snow engine that I've ever seen. Snow Steam Pump Works, Buffalo, New York. They do operate this. Looks like the 10th was the last time that they ran it. They're calling it a, a coreless run. Beautiful machine, beautifully restored. That little guy down there. So let's just take a walk around and look at the gauges there. We'll take a look at it. Uh, this guy right to our left, this is uh, Lindwolf Ammonia Compressor. Go back to the snow engine. The one that's on display at Florida Flywheelers was used for pumping natural gas. I don't know exactly what this one was used for, but I'm sure it was something similar. And the flywheel. I believe that's about the same size flywheel that's on the snow engine at the Florida Flywheelers. After doing a little bit more reading here, they've got a great book here that you can purchase on this, on this snow engine. The whole history of this engine and getting it here and restoring it and everything. So we learned that this was used to pump water up in uh, New York. York Water Company, York, Pennsylvania. Okay. So as we come up after the machine shop, the snow engine, they have some excellent models here to demonstrate how the factories were used here for making pig iron and also the steel. And as we look further back, we have a lot more cool machinery to see 
like this forging press right here. Incredible machine. It would have been even more incredible seeing these guys operate. Look at this beautiful picture. So this is the Bethlehem Steel number two machine shop. It was five football fields long. Wow. For machining large forgings dating to 1890. That is so cool. That is incredible. So notice how most of all these machines are run off the line shaft to either side here. Look at that. Running all the machines. All the bridge cranes up there. It's saying that it still stands. So I don't think that this is something you can go into now, but I would love to stand in there. The number two machine shop. So we saw that on the on print the map, over there. Correct. But Man, it's, that is... we, we have no idea what the building is, is turned into or what it's being used for now, but the shop is incredible. I would like to incredible. have this for my house. That is yep. so cool. Yep. How many machinists do you think actually worked in there? Thousands. Yes. I, I bet you. I bet you there was a thousand people that worked in that one building right there. That is just incredible. Yeah, very cool. Here is a beautiful machinist toolbox on display that was used by a machinist here at Bethlehem Steel from the 1940s. It's still got his original stuff in there that he used. There's a Sterrett tape roll up there at the top. You can see some Sterrett V-blocks right there. I had that same set that were granddad's. That is very cool. Now. To me, it looks identical to a Gerstner tool chest, but according to this tag, I'm gonna let Abby take that. According to this tag, it is not a Gerstner. It says George Schur Company, the Lafayette, I'm sorry, Lafayette Street, New York. So it just looks like a box that is the duplicate size and the way it was made to like a Gerstner, but not made by Gerstner, but I mean, it looks incredible. It's also, notice the reinforcing bracket there on the side. They said that they had to reinforce it after it was hit by a crane. <laughs> <laughs> it includes a lot of his uh, things that, are, that, were, that he used during his uh, machining years Incredible. at Bethlehem Steel. Very cool. Get another shot of the forging press down here closer to it. Some examples of some of the parts that you would have you would have forged your steel here before going on to uh, the finished manufacturing and machining. I love the audio. So, how many miles away could you hear this thing operating? We'd love to know. Interesting info on Bethlehem. We got some stuff for uh, welders here. That's really cool. Uh, seeing the the woman welder here. Love that. Twenty-five thousand women performed fifty-three types of manual work, including dirty, dangerous, and difficult jobs in Bethlehem steel plants and shipyards during World War II. Can you see her badge with her? Oh face yeah, on I got it. the got Ugh. the badge on. That's pretty cool. Got the videos you can watch. Here's some really cool uh, pig iron ingots right here with some great information. And I love these pictures here. Look at all the, look at all the pig iron stacked up. And then they got some really interesting stuff here talking about safety in Bethlehem steel. They even have a chart here showing the total number of accidents for each department, loss of bodily members like fingers, loss of leg and arm, and loss of life. So it looks like the most dangerous place was the blast furnaces. That makes sense. Pretty incredible. Machine shop number six, 14 accidents, no loss of limbs. I like this. Three blasts for first aid men.
I believe we showed this photo when we first come in the museum, but this is a, a better print here that we can see. So it's the number one uh, projectile shop. Uh, World War One era view shows three inch shells stacked on the left and turret lays for metalworking on the right. And that's exactly what I had mentioned to Abby yeah. was that those are all turret lays, but I just wasn't sure what they were manufacturing. So uh, projectiles during World War One, but look how many American flags are in this photo everywhere. It's so beautiful. I mean, it that just is, looks so cool. That is American pride right there. Yes. Absolutely incredible and beautiful. Okay, so this is the silk making area. I know nothing about this, but I just wanted to say how beautiful these machines are. So they're doing card punches. So I'm assuming that they use this to make the pattern for the, for the silk, for the fabric. That's my guess, correct me if I'm wrong, but look how pretty this particular machine is. So this one is also punching the cards, but like this, the tag is pretty. I love the wood on here. This chip should not be allowed to collect above the level of these holes. Look at that. I think that is just so cool. These are the type of machines that I know nothing about because I'm, yeah. not, I'm not used to these types of machines, but whether these machines were, were built for metalworking or for making fabric or any yes. other type of product, that's what this museum oh, is all about. so beautiful. So this one is 1896. So this is something that I absolutely know nothing about is these punch cards for sewing and you know, for the patterns, but it's really interesting there. Morning. Morning. Narrow ribbon loom. Wow. So we're just getting this now where we're going to be threading through this, and each one of those screens gets its own color. And that's what was determined back and forth. And again, it uses that same jacquard system up here. So the, this is the hole that happened in this mm. particular type of machine. There's the punch for it. A little bit less automated than the other one, but it's a simple thing. This was, you know, the ribbon. But still incredible. It is, isn't it? With yeah. so many moving parts, these yes. are like clockmakers, maybe. Yeah. You've got cams, motors, gears, front, everything you can think of, and they all have to run in synchronous. That's so that beautiful. is incredible. Isn't that cool? Yeah. It is incredible. You're lucky, not many people get to see something <laughs> moving. In the that gentleman that stopped, he, he saw us over here looking at the uh, the card punch machine. So he t actually took some time and started explaining some of this stuff to us and we just got to talking. He said that what you see in here is only 5% of what they have that they own, like as far as the museum. Like in a warehouse. Uh, the rest of it's in warehouses. They are, start, they are working on a second floor. They said it might be a year and a half before they get that finished though. But imagine the warehouses where all of the machines are that they have. Yeah. He says you you would be blown away by the stuff that they have in storage. That, that hopefully one day they can get to a lot of that God, stuff. I would love to see and them in that warehouse. Another, have another building <laughs> where they can continue to start displaying some of this stuff. It's just yeah. gonna take a lot of time and a lot of money, he says. Yes. <laughs> Very cool. Well, come visit this place, because he, wow. he did a great job explaining how these machines work. The card punching machines were only used for punching cards and then they were later used on a machine like this behind us here. A loom. You, you can see all the cards would have been sewn in a continuous formation there to make the fabric. I know nothing about this kind of stuff, so I probably sound like an idiot, but I was just trying to explain a little bit of what we were just told on but how this stuff works. But it's still incredibly beautiful machinery. Yep, absolutely. Really cool exhibit on natural gas. So they've got some information right here, and this is some of the equipment used by Walter Snelling in his laboratory. So he said that in 1910, a Model T owner asked Snelling about the potentially explosive gases escaping from his fuel tank. Snelling went to a station and filled a jug. On his way home, the cork kept popping out of, from the vapor pressure. He made a still to heat and then cool the vapors, distilling or separating propane and butane, also known as LP gas, liquid propane. Um, so he separated that from natural gas. He tested LP gas as fuel for gas lamps, hot plates, and cutting torches. That's pretty cool. Always great to learn about the things that we 
that we know about, but we just don't know how they were invented or who came up with the idea and actually discovered these processes to, uh, to create things like natural gas. So we were just talking about Walter Snelling discovering LP gas. And so I, I saw this is pretty cool because, you know, we have to use gas for welding and cutting and brazing. So this is talking about in 1911, he came up with the American Gasol Company. And over the next few years, the new LP gas applications emerged, including converted vehicles, blow torches, and soldering irons. By 1920, there were three sellers in the market. Their brands gradually became recognized in industry for residential use and eventually in agricultural markets as well. So because of him, we now have welding gases that we can use for cutting torches and all kinds of things in industry. So all that information about natural gas is uh, continued over here talking about propane, the history of the propane. It might be kind of hard to see, but can you see the sign over here? Carpenter and Pattern Shop? Let's see if I can get out of the window frame there. There you go. It's Carpenter really cool. and Pattern Shop, building number 92. And I don't know what that is over there, but look how cool that looks. Yep. Really great demonstration here of the Henry Gray and uh, his universal mill demonstrating how they rolled steel into I-beam structure. We've got a couple samples here of some I-beam. There's a 36 inch beam, 24 inch beam, and then also a demonstration there starting from the ingot all the way down to the finish there. Pass number 26, 26 passes to finish it out into a finished I-beam. I really like that model. I like I how they too. light the beam I up red, it's showing really that it's cool. uh, red hot. And they've got a lot of great information here talking about there's something on uh, elevators and you know going higher up in the buildings and then buildings uh, starting out uh, being built with uh, cast iron and eventually the invention of steel was allowed allowed them to uh, build these buildings taller and taller and that extremely nasty noise is the hot rodders going by because I don't of like that, that sound because of that car show <laughs> Well, we've just about seen everything here inside the museum, so we're going to work our way out because they have some stuff outside on display that we haven't got to uh, visit with yet. The museum has done a wonderful job of restoring all of the machinery you see in this museum here. Lots of patterns all through here as well, like up there on the wall. So we just finished the uh, inside of the museum there. What an incredible place to yes. come and visit. You guys definitely ought to put this on your bucket list and come check this out. Yes. And they said they're gonna continue to try to expand this and, uh, and provide even more things to come here and see and learn about. But we're gonna, we're gonna work our way outside here. They have another area here on the outside that you can uh, walk around. I believe they call it Foundry Park. I did want to mention too that I noticed inside, there was a little pamphlet there that they're always looking for volunteers. Uh, anybody in this area looking to volunteer, get in touch with the museum here because they're, they're always looking for people, including folks to help with the mechanical restorations as well. He said that they had a lot of paper, like, you know, blueprints and old advertising. I, I mean, if I could get my hands on that, I would be so happy. I, I would love you, to organize it. I bet you it. would. If I could organize it, I'd be, yeah. But that's something else <laughs> that we love seeing is all of the uh, historical yeah. blueprints and printings and uh, papers and manuals, all that kind of stuff yes. is really, really interesting as well. Yes. This place is great. It I really is incredible. I absolutely yeah. Well, uh, we're, we're gonna walk through the, uh, the little park over here and show you some more of what they got to offer. What do you say? Yes, yes.
Bethlehem Steel spanned almost five miles, the, all the buildings. The length of the campus. This is the guy, uh, it, this might be the one that they operate. Yes. Uh, where you can pay, I think, 30 bucks and two people at a time can actually run this thing back and forth, I believe, right here. Is this a leaf spring? It is a leaf spring. I know Very that good. Now. I would never have known before, so <laughs> thanks, We're babe. always learning, babe. Yes. We're always learning. Air compressors right here. That's a Ingersoll brand, I believe, right here. The cable hoist or cable winch. Hoisting engine number five. So that's a, yeah, that's a steam powered hoist. So cool. Some uh, foundry equipment right there. There's a big press right there. Man, that thing is a monster. A bending press, okay. Straightened or formed curves in armor plate for battleships. Oh, of course. There was a plaque inside that showed how many ships they built in World War II here oh. uh, from Bethlehem Steel. I may not have gotten a photo of that one. I think we're getting ready to uh, get some rain on us here. Yes. So this is a charging machine. Loaded up with scrap metal to be melted down into steel. They got some work tables over here. Oh, do they? A uh, rolling gantry Aww. crane. Look at the vise over there. I think that's a, uh, a Parker vise. It's either a Parker. I can't tell. I'll have to zoom in. Here's another winch. Hoisting engine number one. It is another steam powered winch there as well. You can see the cylinder right here. This is an incredible place to see. Standing right here is amazing. There's every, something in every direction. Yeah, just looking this way, the, the two buildings right here, the electrical shop and then the pattern carpenter shop. And look at the ruins of those buildings over oh. there. Amazing. I really hope that the owners continue to um, rehabilitate these, these structures and these buildings. Yes. Just like this guy right here. Did you notice this building? Yes, it's huge. This is the Bethlehem Steel Hotel. Ah. Oh. Why isn't that going? Can you imagine how cool those rooms would be? I know. Ah. It, it looks they need like to let it, me design that. It looks like it could be haunted right now. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is absolutely fantastic. I'm yeah. not sure what else we're going to see, but if we get anything interesting, we'll definitely share with you guys. Well, I know the guy inside said that there was a place that you can go look at the stacks on the other side. Okay. So I hope we can go track that down and, and try to get a little closer. Maybe right over here. Yeah. So let's go over there and okay. see if we can uh, figure that out because there's a lot of great structures in here that we yeah. could uh, go and see. Well, this has been an incredible stop here at yes. the uh, National keep... Museum of Industrial History. I wanted to make sure I got the name yes. right because I was going to say the wrong thing there. But <laughs> this has really been a great stop. We've, yes. we've both appreciated oh. everything that they have here that they have preserved yes. and restored and have here on display to be able to learn from. This is one of the great things about museums, especially industrial heritage yes. museums, is getting to see the history of all of the industrial machinery that was made to produce the world that we live in today. That is correct. Yep. yep. 
it's really a great place to see. And uh, I think this whole area here at Bethlehem looks very charming to it me. It really you know, the is. Little downtown it's absolutely area. adorable. So we've, we've enjoyed our, our visit here. Yeah. And uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video and definitely come and check this yes. out for yourself. Put yes. this on your bucket list. Come down for the weekend or, you know, there's a lot of great things here to see. So yeah. come and check it out. And if you live near here, please come volunteer here if you have, you know, some time to give. I think yeah. doing that is important. I wish I lived a little closer. I wish I could help out too. Yeah. I mean, they, they're definitely looking for some help with this museum. And uh, maybe some of you guys watching uh, would be interested in that as well. Yeah. But I think we're going to oh, head I on out of it. here, right? Mm -hmm. yes. We're going to head on out of here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I always love seeing these kind of places and trying to capture a little bit of that to share with you here on the channel. We'll see you again real soon. Thank you.